Welcome to a special edition video from Lockdown Electronics and this time we're going to look at um, the Tiny SA and in particular we're going to look at um, some of the additions that have been made in the most recent um, major firmware update. Now there's a video by Eric K. Shock, I'll put a link up there so you can, it's definitely worth um, having a look at that because that details exactly um, what he's done in terms of updating the interface but essentially it involves uh, the mode menu and in particular the low output um, and he's put in some different ways of being able to adjust the uh, the frequency and also the level with some sliders which is very good there's also an additional mode for, for measuring channel power in the spectrum analyzer display and one other thing which maybe initially seems quite minor but actually is potentially very handy indeed is that when you've got the um, tiny sa working as a as a signal generator in low output mode so the low channel is the um, waveform output one of the options you've got is a sweep and the addition that's been made to the software is at the start of the sweep if you enable the sweep a pulse is emitted um, from the high channel which then is just one pulse at the start of each sweep which maybe doesn't sound too exciting except for the fact that that will allow us potentially to synchro the tiny sa with say the sweep of an oscilloscope so that's what i'm going to demonstrate here so what i'm going to do is get the tiny sa producing a swept range of frequencies i'm going to um, feed that into a tuned circuit which I've got on the breadboard here, simply a, a capacitor and a coil but it is a, a coil that has a, a slug I can, I can tune with a trimmer so it's like an IF stage in a, in a receiver and I'm going to synchro the output pulse by feeding into the channel 2 of the scope so to show you how all that works I'm just going to reposition the camera now so you can see the, uh, the scope a little bit better so I've got the Tiny SA set up here, um, producing a frequency on the low output of 200 kilohertz, and I've got it um, with a sweep of range of 400 kilohertz. So it's sweeping from zero to 400 kilohertz, and I've got that doing that every um, 700 milliseconds. So it's a reasonably fast sweep, about three quarter of a second. Uh, and I've got 7 minus 7 dBm output. So the low output of the Tiny SA is connected um, to that tune circuit and um, I'm going to be able to use this trimmer to adjust the, the position of the slug on the, on the tune circuit. Currently it's um, sort of mid position, neither in, it's sort of partially into the windings but not completely. Um, and the scope set up, I've got um, the high output that produces the pulse into channel 2 and you probably can't see it terribly well um, because of the um, light on the screen but there is the pulse. Now I've got it, obviously normally if I got it it's just fine with the pulse to put it in the middle. I've deliberately moved it to the right so I've got the scope triggering from channel 2 on that pulse. I've got it set up to pulse trigger and I've got it at about um, uh, 50 millivolts so it's definitely right in the in the middle of the rise of that pulse. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, move the channel 2 display up a little bit and I'm also going to move it to the left. So the pulse is right at the start of the screen now and we can now, I need to leave channel 2 on otherwise it won't trigger off it but we can now ignore the purple trace and I'm going to turn on channel 1 which is the signal generator coming in uh, via a tune circuit connected effectively in parallel so if I do that give it a moment or two to acquire so what you can see there then is the shape of the resonant curve of that particular tune circuit it's a little inductor from the junk box and a 33 nanofarad capacitor so if I now pop the trimmer tool into the top of that can and if you make a mental note there, that's where the, the peak is. So I'm going to wind that um, down so it's fully in, fully meshed. That's, prob that's the slug probably right in the middle. So we're about there now. Just put my thumb there. And what I'm now going to do is wind it right out. 
and that's about right and as you can see it's moved about one division to the right um, why is this significant well what we've got here is we've got the um, time base of the scope synchronized with the sweeps of the tiny SA and what we're able to view here on the scope is, is a bowed plot and that's the shape of the resonant curve so what we could now do is we could feed the signal generator the low output of the tiny SA into the start of an IF uh, chain in a receiver we could connect the scopes channel 1 to the end of that IF chain and it would allow us to um, to adjust the shape of the IF filtering on the display uh, and that's why I think that's actually a very very handy um, uh, feature that, that Eric has added to the Tiny SA and I think that's going to be um, uh, quite useful. Now um, okay this is a reasonably good scope um, I've also connected this to my rather ancient um, analog uh, scope with a CRT so what I'll now do is I'll now show you how it looks on there and I'm going to need to reposition the camera to do that so I'll be back in a moment okay this is my 1970s ham egg single channel um, oscilloscope um, just 10 megahertz bandwidth but what it does have is um, obviously it's single channel but it does have an external trigger input so I've got the tiny SA's uh, channel 1 attached here and then to the external trigger and then I've got the output from the signal generator via the tuned circuit um, connected to uh, the input now I've got the brightness up as high as I can get it and you know you've obviously got the limitation of a, a cathode ray tube here but I think you can probably make out there is that characteristic Gaussian shape curve um, if I tweak the time base a little bit there uh, you can you can actually see it tracing out the the shape of the um, resonance and uh, try and get a little bit better for you well, obviously with a modern digital storage scope you can adjust the persistence and you can see things that um, uh, people in the past struggled to see but you can definitely see the shape of the filter there and what I've done here I've simply moved because um, what you actually get is obviously you get a positive going and a negative going curve and you wouldn't normally view a tuned circuits response like that you'd normally view it just as the you know the top of the Gaussian curve like that so just wanted to make the point here that this is a tiny SA which cost about I can't remember how much I paid about 60 UK pounds and this is my um, fairly ancient but rather nice um, Hameg uh, single channel scope that I got second hand for about 70 quid and I certainly could um, use this um, for radio alignment so nice one Eric K-Shock, you've done very well with that update of the Tiny SA. I can thoroughly recommend uh, people making the effort to install the, the update. It isn't so difficult to do and uh, probably took me about, about 10 minutes and probably 5 minutes of that was reading the instructions. So there we go, that's a um, new update to the Tiny SA. OK, well hopefully that's been useful and perhaps encourage you to explore the um, options on a tiny SA does definitely show you the, the resonant curve and uh, certainly don't need a, a, a scope with facilities like this one to be able to show that as you've already seen with my, my ancient analog scope uh, since I recorded that um, analog scope screen uh, after I'd finished recording I had the brainwave that if I took a, a photograph of the trace with a a slow shutter speed uh, you'd hopefully be able to see the trace so here it is that's um, I think that's about an eight, eighth of a second uh, shutter speed and it's captured very clearly captured the uh, the shape of the resonance curve as you're seeing here the great thing of course about modern digital scopes is they have got lots of facilities to allow you to adjust the persistence which is nice um, thanks very much for watching thumbs up please if you've um, enjoyed it and uh, hopefully um, you consider subscribing and maybe tell people about the channel and we'll see you next time